Welcome to our next video lecture for topic number one, uh, in which we're going to cover the basics of bookkeeping. Again, this is a review uh, of material you have had in earlier accounting classes. In this video, we're going to talk mostly about the concepts of debits and credits. Prior to the information age, of course, accounting records were kept in books. And the method that was used to track the data was called double entry accounting. Double entry accounting was devised by a Italian monk, Lucia Pacioli. And Pacioli was born and raised in Venice, uh, where he worked as a mathematician. And he eventually assisted the merchants uh, in the Venice area by devising this double entry accounting system. And if you go over to Wikipedia, you'll see this article. And it's, it's a very interesting little piece about the uh, very early beginnings uh, of accounting. And, I, and I, I really encourage you, if you have a few minutes one day, to take a look at this page and see the history of our profession. All right, so what is double entry bookkeeping all about? Well, it's all about the accounting equation. And the accounting equation, remember, says that assets equals liabilities plus equity. Well, remember that equity is actually made up of two components. We have our investments by our owners and we'll say equity equals the paid in capital, that is the money that the owners have put in the business, plus retained earnings. And that is the cumulative amount in which revenue has exceeded expenditures. So retained earnings has two components. And those two components, we can say retained earnings is the cumulative amount of revenue minus expenses. So we can expand our accounting equation and we can state it this way. We can say assets equal our liabilities and the components of equity, which is plus paid in capital, plus revenue, minus expenses. Now, Brother Pacioli was a mathematician. And if you remember back to your algebra classes, we can take this formula and we can make certain changes to it. For example, we can say this. We can take the negative expense and bring it on the other side of the equal sign and we can then express the accounting equation like this. Assets minus expenses, excuse me, assets plus expenses equals liabilities plus paid in capital plus revenue. 
Now, we don't report assets plus expenses. We don't report liability plus revenue anywhere on the balance sheet. But this becomes the basis for our debit and credit rules. I'm drawing what would be called a T account. The left side of a T account is the debit side. And the right side is called the credit side. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about debits and credits. Okay, now I want you to forget everything that you've learned about debits and credits. Okay, now that I have you hypnotized, I want you to forget everything you have ever heard regarding debits and credits. Debits simply means left. Credits simply means right. Nothing else. Don't think about your bank account. Don't think about accounts you have with credit card companies. Uh, when you've heard the expression, we're going to debit your account, credit your account. I want you to forget all of that. Debit means left, credit means right. And when we talk about that, we are referring to this. Assets and expenses will increase with the debit. Liabilities, paid in capital, and revenue will increase through a credit. Since assets and expenses increase with a debit, we expect these account balances to have a debit balance. Since liabilities, paid in capital, and revenue increase through a credit, we expect them to have a credit balance. This is a very handy chart that's in Chapter 2 of your textbook. I recommend that you dog ear that page and keep it if you are a little weak on the operation of debits and credits. As we can see, as we stated, assets will increase through a debit, decrease the opposite manner through a credit. The same holds true for expenses and losses. So we can bring these to the other side of the equal sign. Liabilities, paid in capital, retained earnings, revenue and gains work the opposite. They're on the other side of the equation. To this, we've got to rem remember that we do not expect certain things to happen on a routine basis. We do not expect, for example, expenses to have many entries where they are being credited outside of the end of the accounting period or to correct an error. The same holds true with revenue. These are temporary accounts. They live only through one period. Assets, liabilities, paid in capital, retained earnings. These are permanent. I'll abbreviate by perm. 
first step in the bookkeeping process is the journal entry. In the past, of course, this was maintained in a book called the General Journal. Uh, today, this is more than likely going to be the format of data entry in a computerized accounting system. Journal entries are frequently made by accountants in word papers to document their work to explain why entries are being made. So let's take a look at what a journal entry in good form is going to look like. In this first transaction, which is out of the textbook, we have the recording of the issuance of common stock. So we have our asset account, cash, and it is going to increase by 60,000, so we debit it. The post reference refers to the account number associated with this cash account in the chart of accounts. For our purposes in class, we will not be using these types of references. We'll just be making summary journal entries. The other side of this transaction is to common stock, which is an equity paid in capital account. It too is going up. So we're going to credit it for an equal amount. And the first important thing is that debits and credits have to equal each other. As far as formatting, it's good form to indent the credit entries uh, in the account titles. And it's good form to include a little summary of what the transaction is all about. Because again, remember, typically when accountants are making a journal entry uh, outside of the computer entry system, these are for uh, non-routine transactions, so we we'll want to give a little explanation. After the journal entry is made, the bookkeeping process would next post that information into the general ledger, a separate book. And you can see here is where we get our model for the T account. The T account is a shorthand expression of what is going on in the general ledger. And often accounts will use T accounts to demonstrate the effect of a transaction or event in the uh, accounting system. When we say entries are posted from the journal to the ledger, what do we mean? Well, the diagram here is from the textbook again. And let's use the cash account to summarize what's going on when we post. Every transaction that involves cash in the general journal will be brought over. So our first transaction, remember, was the issuance of common stock. Well, that increased the cash. If we have transactions that use the cash, these will be credits. And the function of the general ledger is to track individual transactions within a period that in a manner that allows us to determine the account balance at the end of a period. And again, cash being an asset, we expect it to have a debit balance, which means the sum of the debits minus the credits will give us the change in cash in the period. In this example, this is a new company. It had no beginning balance. But in, in an existing company, we would take the beginning balance in cash from, say, June 30th, add in the debits, subtract out the cash. So we would have a beginning balance.
in this case it's zero, plus the debits minus the credits gives us the cash balance. Once we have successfully posted all of our journal entries to our general ledger, a report is then run that is known as a trial balance. And a trial balance will list out all of the accounts in the chart of accounts, what the current balance is, and the account will either have a debit balance or a credit balance. Notice it does not have both. We do not summarize the debits and then separately the credits in the cash account. Instead, we come up with one balance. So it would be improper just to add up the debits, add up the credits, and then list them here in the trial balance. Why? Well, because that's not the way we report our financial statements. Our financial statements are reported with account balances. So we'll list out each of the accounts, whether they have a debit or credit balance. We would total up the debits, total up the credits, and the reason we call it a trial balance is that we want to ensure that the debits and the credits equal each other. In the old accounting information systems, the book, paper, and pencil book uh, systems, uh, errors were frequently made in postings, uh, and when that happened, you spent much time trying to figure out where the error was made and why your debits and credits do not balance. Today's accounting information systems have made the task of bookkeeping uh, much easier, but even going back to the earliest days, you can see here that Lukia told the readers that a person should not go to sleep at night unless his debits equal the credits. So that's our little rundown of the basics of bookkeeping. We will be using uh, a demonstration problem in class uh, where we'll prepare journal entries and we will post these to the uh, T accounts that will make up uh, our general ledger and we'll prepare a trial balance and we will have completed the accounting cycle.